What's up everybody? Uh, what I'm gonna try to do today is troubleshoot and try to get some specs for this motor that I found in the garbage. <laughs> So I just wanted to preface this video real quick about how it's going to go. It's going to be a little bit choppy, but not screwed, H down. Chopped into a few sections. I don't have anything about this motor. It is trash. It was trashed. So the first section of this is we're going to talk about the setup. Second section is we're going to try to see what's up with this encoder, whether or not it works. The next section, we're going to talk about some pulse width modulation with the motor itself to try to get some, some baby steps into my final application, which is going from trash to CNC. Cheap, effective, and free. It's right up my alley, man. So check this out. This isn't gonna be, hey, look, I made a CNC machine in 15 minutes. You'll just have to stay tuned. But in the meantime, let's get to it. All right, we're back. So this jumbled mesh you see is um, my feeble attempts to try to understand this, uh, this Hanson 12 volt motor. I got this out of a Texas Instruments. Uh, typewriter from the late 80s I think it was like 86 or 84 like you can tell just by the look of the carriage like there's a little perspective there's a miter saw back there it runs the length of the table so I got this guy it was being thrown away and I was like yo let me take apart this bad boy pick out what I want I mean this thing runs on a pulley it's pretty you know pretty stellar and I hooked it up and sure enough the carriage ran back and forth so I was like okay that's cool uh, curveball though um, the dude that I was with, he was like, yo, man, I was like, you, you snagged a pretty good find, you know, for like DIY maker kind of stuff. And I was like, why do you say that? And he's because, oh, because it has an optical encoder on the back. This guy here, the motor here, it only has the two pins from a four pin connector. This guy, however, the optical encoder, it has an eight pin connector and only one of the pins, pin number two that I labeled, goes to nothing. It goes to nothing. So not knowing much about optical encoders, I was like, well, let me see if I can try to figure out what's going on. So I looked on the interweb and then I had a photo. I took photos of the... Um, of the piece itself and this treasure map you know like Goonies inspired except if it was you know with Texas Instruments printers I tried to figure out what the chips meant what they did I'm not an electrician I'm not an electrical engineer I'm just trying to self-teach you know so I took this case off in the back to try to get an idea of uh, there are four four sets of diodes in there and I understand that you know there's tick marks and these things are very fine there's like an A and B path for the top and then an A and B path for the inner one. And so it seemed like one was going to the ground pin of all the, the diodes here. But also it seemed like six was also going to ground to the other set. So I was like, okay, well six has to be ground. So which is power? It's gotta be eight, right? Well, no, power eight seems to be like an output pin receiving the signal, the infrared signal uh, or light signal, whatever the hell it uses, I don't even know. Uh, I assume it's infrared because I can't see it whenever I power it up. So five volts, just, it's, it's jumper to all four of these ding dongs, and it also goes through these set of uh, resistors here to the, um, what I assume are the light emitting diodes. So I was like, well, five's gotta be power, so, and six are ground. So I have the connectors, how the pinouts are, right? So this would be one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to situate these pins with my five bolts. All right, so we want to connect number one to ground, and we want to connect number five to power, which is right there. Now, the buck wasn't doing anything, right? We are going to pass on the buck. So now we have our configuration there. So now, what we want to do is we want to check to make sure that what we are doing is actually... No! Why? I'm losing... Uh, I'm losing... You know what? Let's just get rid of it. It's fine. All right, so we got the multimeter set up, and this is what I want to do, baby. So check this out. This is what's going to happen. We're going to check number one on ground, which is right here. We're going to check number five. Shouldn't have had so much coffee. I'm so shaky. Five bolts, four, nine, eight, that's a great thing. So now, we said earlier that pin number seven and pin number eight were for the top of the encoder. Looking at my configuration, we got one, two, which is nothing, three, four, which is the bottom, number five, which is power, six, ground, seven, eight. So I'm going to connect ground to ground, and we'll start with three for the bottom. Right now, it is pulled 
to show. So now what I want to do is I want to tweak the narble and hopefully we see it drop. And we do! Hooray! And now it's coming back up to five. Dropping. Going up. Going down. Very good. Fantastic. All right, so that was three. That's good. So now let's see. Well, actually, let's see what three is doing here. Three is pulled to five point, or sorry, 4.86 volts. Four is effectively zero. 0, 0.04 volts DC. Uh, just so you notice, right? Oh, we just pulled up and then down. Uh, to five and then down. So I'm, I'm on 20 uh, DC volts on my multimeter. I'm just pushing it very slow. I'm barely even... I mean, like, not at all. It's all you, bro. I'm not even touching it. Kind of putting the proof to practice. That's good. So now we're going to go to pin 7, which is 4.86, and then 8 is 0 0.01. Okay, so right now I have voltage going to 7. Ideally, it should drop, which is a good sign. Dropping, returning, dropping, returning, dropping. Well, I never dropped the last time, but you get the idea. All right, so 8 right now. 7 was at 4. 0.85 volts now 8 is at 0 0.05 and boom now we can see that we have our hypothesis is correct at least it seems that way on the surface I'm not gonna start counting my ducks or whatever I'm using pin v1 5 volts 5 amps so I am assuming knowing nothing I can't get a spec sheet for this thing focus I'm just assuming that this thing is gonna work 5 volts 5 amps you could feasibly destroy your encoder with this experiment that I'm performing. Uh, you would just assume probably get better results uh, starting out, or by better results I mean not destroying your goodness, by using 3.3 volts or something smaller, you know what I mean? Like if you got this from like a little inkjet printer that's like a little beep, 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 and it's not really that robust, you probably want to start with 3.3 volts. This guy is uh, big and beefy from the 80s, it's like back when the Caprice Classic was in style, you know what I'm talking about? So like steel, reinforcement, quality, 80s baby. Just like me from the 80s is what I'm talking about. Very good, so there we go. So now we know that's uh, what's going on with our machine a little bit better. I still am confused about what's going on with pin six and four. Now, moving on to the next thing. What I can test is the motor itself. So I got my power supply, so I said the five volts were going to the breadboard that I was using to measure the encoder. 24 volts coming out of this bing bong right here. I got it on a buck, 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 buck converter. I believe that the LN or L298N has a transistor or just the diode itself or whatever. Like, um, it has a voltage drop of 0.7 each. So I bumped it up. This, since this is a 12 volt motor, I bumped it up to 13.4 on the on the pot right there. So that's going into the L298N, and I have the jumper connected so that uh, I can use that power to bust up the five volts going to the Arduino. So my code, what I have it saying, here, let me see if I can get it up here. So I define my inputs. I know um, this is kind of blusted, but. So I define my inputs three, four, five. The enable pin is gonna go to this piss, uh, pulse width modulation. Piss width? I don't think so. So I just define that as, I just have it connect to the motor B or whatever. So uh, my enable three is the PWM on the, um, the pin out for the Arduino. Four and five are just gonna control the direction, so. So I define those outputs, that's great. And then my demo is, uh, this will just move the motor direction and speed. So I have input three, or uh, IN three, whatever that pin, set to high so it'll move at 50 pulses. So I just set it to 50 just because I wanted it to be slow because I don't, like I had this thing set in the middle so I don't wanna just like crash the crap, you know, there's no like end stops or anything. I don't wanna like send the bad boy into like, you know, the wall and just like destroy it. I'm gonna delay two seconds, reverse the direction. Uh, that way I can get a better idea as to, you know, which direction is which. Usually people, they do like hobby motors with like robots and they're like, oh, well this is clockwise, this is anti-clockwise, whatever. Yeah, so I'm just going to go one direction at 50 out of 255. I'm going to go the other direction with the pin out, and then I'm going to stop it, and then I'm just going to go on the loop. So so hopefully whenever I connect this bing bong to ground, you know, good things will come. Good things. Oh, that's not good. Well, it's definitely moving. But I don't think it likes it. Okay, that's a pretty, that's a pretty shrill hum. Here, this is what I'm going to do, baby. So 50 vol or 50 pulses for the pulse width um, made it hum. I mean, it was moving, but it made it hum. It doesn't like that low a step uh, pulse or whatever the nomenclature. I don't think that's the right nomenclature. All I did was I changed my sketch to say, hey, we're going to set the pulses from 50 to 100. So now let's see if it still is a hummy hum hum. Oh, too far. 
Two seconds. Okay. Well, it moves. This is why end stops would be more appropriate. Well, no, it's, it's, maybe that's like perfect, man. Maybe I nailed it on the head because like, yeah. So maybe now I, what I could do is I could try to set it up for like a one second demo to say like, hey, I want you to go slow and ramp up. And then I can also define what that lower limit of uh, pulse width modulation would be. Like I would just say like, hey, if it's less than 100, just don't do it. Just start it at 100 and go to, or I could just say, hey, just go to 100 to 255. And like I say, if I can just get this bad boy on the opto and kodo um, enchilada, then like, you know, that would be nice. So my output three, I have set the high first. Which direction does it go? It goes towards me. And then away from me. Okay. And that's gonna happen every time? Yeah. So three comes towards... I'm gonna write that down just so I don't forget. Okay, we're on to the next step. So the only thing that I did differently from this sketch... Yeah, we want to turn the motor on. Uh, we want to send it... So enable or high on three makes it go towards the motor. So, um, so I have it set away. The carriage is set away. So I'm gonna set the minimum to 100. I'm gonna accelerate it up to 255 for... Uh, what is it? Half a millisecond, uh, and then I'm gonna turn it on. So it's gonna go. It's gonna do the uh, do the thing. Wait again, and it's gonna decelerate. So that'll take it to the full one second. So then, yeah. So it's gonna accelerate up for half a second, decelerate, and then hopefully stop. And then well, we're gonna switch. We're gonna delay, and then we're gonna switch directions. So then it's gonna hopefully go up, uh, or come back, decelerate, and then it's just gonna stop. Same setup. Everything set up the way it was before. I'm just gonna connect this uh, guy right here to ground. And we're gonna see what happens. Holy hell! Yeah. So it's pretty fast. Maybe I want to set the, uh... Oh, I knocked the thingy off. Not the thingy. Okay, so, uh... Maybe I want to go a little bit shorter than the half a second. Yeah, because the full wrench, because it's going to speed all the way over. Yeah, I didn't take, uh, I didn't carry the one. Beep, beep, beep. We want to set it on. Let's go... Let's take it down to, a, like, 0. 0.1 of a second. We're going to save it. Done saving. We're going to upload it. We're gonna we're gonna hold hands. We're gonna kiss babies. Uploading, done uploading. Baller, baller time. Back to the action. Now we're gonna reconnect the. Here, look at this. Isn't that cool? It looks like a beehive or something, just made out of metal. Hey, that looks a lot better. It's going crazy. It's going crazy. Oh no! Why is it slamming into the wall? So this thing is going back and forth, and occasionally it bumps into this ding dong right here. And like I said, I don't have any end stops, and I should probably try to get some end stops. So, if I can attach these guys, I've got wires and stuff to do that. Maybe I could just say like, hey, if you hit the end stop, shut her down. So yeah, like I say, man, you know, like it's not that, uh, not that difficult. Just, uh, my best advice is just, just, you gotta start somewhere. I had an Arduino from a previous project. Boom. H-Bridge. I schooled myself on what an H-Bridge does. It makes a lot of sense. And then I got this buck, 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 buck converter. I have two of these. This is this one actually came, uh, I mean, it's not a Hanson motor, but it's still the same thing and it still has the same pinout. Um, I think this was from like a newer model of uh, the TI. This was like, instead of like the 86 model, this was like the 88. So newer, you know, with air bunnies. This was for the paper feed, man. You remember the old dot matrix paper feed? Probably not. So this is what I'm gonna call this video. We know that the motor works. The motor moves back and forth. Pulse with modulation with the book, the L298N, Arduino. It all works. That's good. That's a positive step. Second thing is that we know what the pinout is. We know that that is true. So, stay tuned. We're going to figure it out. So I'm going to do a plug real quick for myself. Dan Cozy 713 on Instructables. That's where everything was sparked. Between Instructables and Tech Shop, that's where I got my maker, my maker inspiration it was like a seed. It was planted. And then it was maker time. I have a, an instructable where I went from printer, carriages, CD-ROM, chintzy 3D printing pen into a finished product. It works. It prints. It's a 3D printer. And it was all trash. If you want to go check that out, it's pretty sweet. It's very old though. I think I made this years ago. And so I'm just trying to get right back into it. Trying to figure out a more robust application for a CNC project. So I appreciate you sticking with me. We'll see you next time.